Howdy folks, this is Brian Grant with CSG Pro, and in this video we're going to be building some zoom-in windows in Power BI using the calculate table function. So what do we mean by that? Well, let's say that we're, uh, we've are we got a situation like this, right? And the ask is, we've got this chart up here that's got all these days, and each day is associated a number of cases. It doesn't really matter what. We'll just say cases for right now. And what we want is we want it so that when you click up here on this top chart on a day, right, on the bottom chart, you don't get this. What you get is this day in the previous six days, right? So there should always be only six days here. So it's like we're zooming in, right? So we've got a bigger version of the same thing. That's not what we have now. Now we just get, you know, the highlighting of the one day. We want this day and the previous six down here, okay? So to do that, we're going to use some uh, fun decks and some disconnected date tables. So let's get started. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and, oh, heck, I'll just leave this like it is for right now. Okay, so uh, the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to need a role-playing calendar table, right, or a second calendar table. I spent some time trying to find a way to do this without that, and uh, I tried and tried, um, and I found some fun stuff out about DAX, but I couldn't quite make it work. So we're going to need to duplicate the calendar table. So to do that, I'm going to right-click on the calendar table, and I'm going to hit uh, Edit Query. Now I've already named this calendar high. Yours is probably just called calendar. You could leave it as calendar or you know whatever you want to do. I'm going to have a, a high calendar for the chart up here and a low calendar for the chart down here. So to make my low uh, calendar, I'm going to head over here to this query. I'm going to right click on it and I'm just going to hit uh, reference. Right. So now I'm going to look here and say alright, did I get the date typing correct? Yep, date, number, text, date, perfect. I don't want to call this calendar high though. I want to call this calendar low for high and low. Oh, not low, low, like that. Okay, so now I could go ahead, hit close and apply. I'm just going to go ahead and load that new calendar table into the data model. We're going to have to wire it up, so I'm going to head here to my, uh, what is this, uh, relationship view. So I've already got calendar high. Here I've got calendar low. I'm going to drag it down here, so again, high and low. And we're going to relate this on the dates column. So dates. Okay. Now, because of the way that I've set my particular model up, this is a it defaulted as a one-to-one -one, uh, relationship. Yours is probably going to automatically be many-to-one with a one uh, not bidirectional filtering. But just to make sure, I'm going to go ahead and set that up manually. So I'm going to double-click on that. Oh, I did that a little fast, right? I'm going to double-click on the relationship to open it up. I'm going to say, well, the date table to the data table. This should be many, and this should be one. So this should be one to many. So we're going to say one to many. Okay, fact table is always sort of the many side. Cross filtering direction, it might work with uh, both, but I always like to turn this stuff off because, gosh, it can be it can be really confusing. It can create some, some strange behaviors. Okay, perfect. That's what we need. Head back over here to the report. And uh, I'm going to need, basically what I'm going to need is I'm going to need uh, two measures. I'm going to need one measure that's going to figure out you know, what the last date selected was up here, and then I'm going to use that last date selected to filter down to just that day in the previous six down here. So let's go ahead and get our last date selected. So let's think about uh, how, how we're going to do this, right? So each one of these dates is associated with a date in the, uh, well, the high calendar table, right? So we're going to want to go through all the lists, or all the dates in the, in the high calendar table, and get the top one that's selected, right? The top one that's in the current filter context. Uh, we're also going to want to make sure in case this date table goes out beyond uh, the days for which we have values, which it does, that uh, we only include days for which there are there is data, right? And we also want to make sure that um, that we don't uh, th that whatever date we are down here doesn't affect what the date selected is up here, right? Because we're going to use that last date selected for each one of these bars down here. So any uh, you know for each one of these bars, we're going to have to clear. The, the knowledge about which bar it is down there, and uh, just get the last date selected up here. Okay, so let's head. I'm going to twirl open data. I'm going to create my measure here. I've already got a measure called total cases. That's very easy. It's just a sum of the cases. Very very simple. So I'm going to get a new measure, and I'm going to call this last date selected. Right. Okay. So. Uh, this is uh, the very first thing I might try when doing this is I'm going to say, well, it's I'm not not going to be so simple as to do a max. I'm going to go ahead and do a max x. So I'm going to say, hey, get a table, add a column to it, and find the maximum value of that new column. Okay, so what what's the table that we want to get? Well, we want the 
the high calendar table. So the low calendar table is associated with this table. The high calendar table is associated with this table, right? So we uh, we go ahead and we say, all right, let's get the calendar high, right? So go get the calendar high table. And uh, what do you want to get? Well, get the uh, the highest date. So it's calendar high and date. Okay. Now you might think that would work, and that's a first good effort. Um, the problem is, uh, first off, is that when we do this, we're going to get the maximum uh, calendar date for the entire date table. And the date table kind of goes out beyond here. It goes all the way to the end of 2017, right? So this isn't going to work. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to uh, filter this by the data table, right? So we're going to do some cross-filtering. So, um, or I'm sure, is it many-to-many -many filtering? Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, this and we're going to do a calculate table. Say, okay, so go get that table, shift enter, right? But when you get it, I want you to filter it by the data table, right? So basically I want you to use the data table as a filter for the calendar table. So only bring back days where there is data, okay? Now I close parentheses and I hit comma. And I might think that I'm done and I'm getting awfully darn close. The problem is um, when I call uh, data, the data table, right? So I imagine I'm, I'm one of these, you know, uh, bars right here, right? Uh, let's say, I don't know, let's just say that I'm on, on March, 5th, March 1st, right? If I call the data table from that bar, the data table isn't going to be all the rows in the data table. It's going to be all the rows for only March 1st, right? So we're only going to be looking at March 1st. So we've, we've attempted to just filter by the, date tab the data table. We've ended up filtering by the data table and the calendar low table. So we have to go ahead and clear those columns from the filter context. So what we're going to do is we're going to throw this um, reference to data in another calculate table. Calculate table, shift enter, okay, arrow over, comma, shift enter. So now we're going to do the all of the calendar low. And we'll just do the entire darn thing, right? So we're going to say, hey, any filters on calendar low, go ahead and get rid of them. We don't care about those, okay? So let's see, if I got this right, you said say, all right, I want you to get the uh, the maximum date from the calendar high table. I want you to filter it by the data table, but any filters that are on the uh, calendar low table, don't include those in the filter, right? So we go ahead, hit enter. Oh, two, let's see, what did I mess up? Calculate table, max x, oops, let's see. Oh, I gotta close that out. That's the problem. Sorry about that. Okay, so we're gonna close out this calculate table. So we're gonna call that. We're gonna close out this calculate table, and now this is gonna be the last argument for max x. So that should work just fine. Okay. So, uh, well, we should. In fact, maybe I should have done this a second ago. We don't want uh, these two charts to use the same axis. We want this chart, the high chart, to use the dates from the high uh, calendar table. We want this one to use the dates from the low calendar table. We're going to twirl that open. So I'm going to go ahead and take, uh, in fact, I'm just going to hit X right there. Take date, throw it on there. You're going to get this, which I get sometimes. I'm going to go ahead and switch that over to date. There we go. Okay. So uh, now, when I click up here, since I should say, since I click up here now, this should have the uh, same effect we had before. So let's go ahead and get this guy out of the way a little bit and let's get ourselves a card let's see I got a card and I'm gonna throw the last day selected on that card okay so the last day right now uh, when I uh, built this thing was last Friday which is 420 so we can click there so now the last date selected is 420 if I don't have anything selected if I click here the last day selected should now be 326 okay so now I'm going to be able to use that information about what's the last day selected up here to filter down these, um, the chart down here to just this day and the previous six. Okay, and that's the easy part. We've done the hard work so far. Uh, first off, I'm going to go to Format, Edit Interactions, and switch this to Filter from Highlighting. Turn off Edit Interactions. So, yep. There we go. Okay. 
so now I'm going to build my second measure. So I'm going to right click on data. I'm going to do new measure. And I'm going to call this total cases window, right? And I'm going to do shift enter. And I'm going to do if. So we're going to do a, a start with an if statement. We're going to say, hey, before we do anything else, see if I'm, you know, uh, on this day for each one of these calculations. Am I on the day or either on it or six days before it? If I am, we're going to calculate the normal uh, calculation. If we're not, just don't show anything. Okay. So if shift enter, we're going to do values. And we're going to say, hey, get the values of the calendar date low. So for each one of these bars, when we calculate this thing, what day are we on? Which bar are we on? So if we're on the bar of March 1st, check to see if that is less than or equal to the last date selected. Right? I'm going to do a plus zero here to keep it really explicit. But uh, you get the idea. Oh, I'm sorry, not a comma there. We're going to do shift enter. Uh, two ampersands for and. So, so it's going to be less than the last date selected plus zero. So less than the last date selected. Or, or I should say, uh, let's see. And calendar low date again. Is that you can also be greater than or equal to the uh, last date selected, not plus six, minus six. Okay. So for each one of these bars, go find the last date selected and see if that bar is either on that day or at least three days um, within the last six days of that day. Okay. If you are, comma, go ahead and we're going to do a calculate of the total causes. Calculate, shift enter of the total cases, right? Do a uh, calculate. So why do we need that calculate? We need that calculate because there's this filter context being introduced from up here, from the calendar high table for when we click on stuff, we want to get rid of that, right? It's going to be too restrictive. So we're going to say all and calendar high. There we go. Shift enter, close parentheses. And finally, shift enter, we're going to do blank. Okay. Shift enter, backspace, Close parentheses. So what we're saying here is for each one of these bars, go see if that bar is either on the day that's selected or at least within the last six of that day selected. If it is, hey, we want you to go ahead and show, go calculate the total cases, but ignore whatever filters were up here, right? If it's not, go ahead and return nothing. So we hit enter. Twirl that guy closed. And I'm going to take this, put it right there. I'm going to remove total cases, right? And so now we could click on any of these. And we just get, let's see, let's make this a little bigger so you can see it. So, hey, if I click on, let's see, let's click on what, 325? I click on 325, and I start on the 25th, and I go back six days. So I get the week ending on the 25th, right? Boom. There. Oops. Boom. Just like that. Okay, um, well, I think uh, we did some, some fun stuff with Dexter. I hope it was interesting. I hope it wasn't too difficult. But uh, if it was, hey, uh, go back and watch it again. I think it's actually try worth it to try and start to uh, learn some of the more advanced Dex stuff. Okay, well, I do hope that was helpful. And until then, keep on powering on.